Greetings and welcome to worship today. I'm Rob Kopp, pastor of Bemidji United Methodist Church. I'm Michelle Miller, pastor of Wesley United Methodist in Crookston and Erskine and Foston United Methodist Churches. We are a clergy couple coming to you from the sanctuary of Bemidji United Methodist Church. Let us be in a spirit of worship. God is shade from August heat. The sweetness of a blackberry right off the bush. A drink from the corner store pressed to our foreheads. God is the ripe belly of a rain cloud to parched soil. They are the soil itself, rich brown whispering of blooming. God is the dark purple leaves of a cherry plum tree. They are the invitation to rest found in the ink of night sky. God loves melanin, shade, the wonder of deep hues. Let us gather in the shadow of God's wings. Let us pray. Sacred mystery, we know the logic of empire influences our thoughts. Make vivid imagery beyond that of battlefields, breastplates, and waging war. Teach us of ecosystems and of solidarity. School us in softness, intimacy, and soulful communication. Empower us as we seek your wisdom so we may live a life of emboldened peace. Amen. The scripture is from Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 to 20. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and his powerful strength. Put on God's armor so that you can make a stand against the tricks of the devil. We aren't fighting against human enemies, but against rulers, authorities, forces of cosmic darkness, and spiritual powers of evil in the heavens. Therefore, pick up the full armor of God so that you can stand your ground on the evil day, and after you have done everything possible to still stand. So stand with the belt of truth around your waist, justice as your breastplate, and put shoes on your feet so that you are ready to spread the good news of peace. Above all, carry the shield of faith so that you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word. Offer prayers and petitions in the Spirit all the time. Stay alert by hanging in there and praying for all believers. As for me, pray that when I open my mouth, I'll get a message that confidently makes the secret plan of the gospel known. I'm an ambassador in chains for the sake of the gospel. Pray so that the Lord will give me the confidence to say what I have to say. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's a story about Mr. Rogers getting ready to film a show at Penn Station in New York City, and he saw a little boy with his mom. The little boy was carrying a very large plastic sword. It was not only really big, but it had lights and sound effects the sort of thing that a superhero in a movie might use. Mr. Rogers knelt down and said to the little boy, my, that's a big sword. And the little boy said, it's not a sword, it's a death ray. Mr. Rogers leaned in past the death ray and whispered something in his ear that made the little boy finally look up at him and nod sincerely. When Mr. Rogers was asked later what he'd said, he replied, Oh, I just knew that whenever you see a little boy carrying something like that, it means that he wants to show people that he's strong on the outside. I just wanted to let him know that he was strong on the inside, too. And so that's what I told him. I said, Do you know that you're strong on the inside, too? 
Maybe it was something he needed to hear. Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus to encourage them and also to challenge them, to remember that they were called to stand for what Jesus stood for and what Paul himself stood for, that God was on the side of the poor and marginalized. God was for love against systems of oppression and hate, notably then the Roman Empire. Paul had been encouraging and building those already faithful Jesus followers into a strong and resilient community of faith. His letter to them reflects how he holds them. As he closes, they were each and together to act and speak and live that truth, though it was unpopular and even dangerous. As he wrote to encourage them, Paul was imprisoned by the Roman Empire. Helmets, shields, swords, tools of battle and violence, symbols too of power and the oppression of empire. These objects of the strength of empire were all around as he looked around him. Paul was a problem for the Roman Empire. He was powerfully subversive. And in preaching the way of Jesus, he, of course, organized against loyalty to the Roman Empire. They arrested him as a dissident. All the effective Jesus followers lived this message, counterculturally. First, loyalty was not to the powers that be. The followers of Jesus' values were to serve and help each other and to serve and help others who were oppressed, not for individual power and gain. The power of this message was alarming to Rome, counter as it was to all that Rome stood for. And the passion you hear under Paul's words is the ter determination that the message of Jesus be heard, that people receive the invitation to a life of love and justice liberation from oppression of all kinds. As Paul dictates these words, implements of war and oppression are close at hand. And it's clear that this is a vulnerable place from which Paul writes these strong words of encouragement as he closes his letter. Paul picks up the images of those tools of war at hand and transforms them into something entirely different. Rather than an outward, isolating, individualistic, violent strength, instead, an invincible inner strength, strength of mind and spirit, the strength of colleagues and collaborators with shared passion and promise, pushing on to teach and show and live love like Jesus did. What Paul has done here in his appropriation of the military images of empire has often been misused in our Christian history. We as Jesus followers must take care to use these images only as Paul would have used them, as he would have meant them, which is not, not to be used as tools of violence and conquest and oppression. Paul is all about resisting violence and oppression. So we, must take infinite care in how we hold these images. Perhaps we can imagine the images of war around Paul not as implements of war, but as tools. As followers of the way, as resistors of systems of domination, we have tools and strategies to support our work. For a baker, perhaps an apron of righteousness. For a teacher, a lesson plan of the spirit? What does it take to speak and act strongly and powerfully from a place of vulnerability where you are by no means in control, but you have a passion inside? And you know that your message is one of liberation and peace. And people all around who you love are in need of peace and liberation from oppression, in need of knowing that they are loved and that love wins. This is Jesus' message and Paul's message, writing from his jail cell. And we approach these images today 
it remains a subversive and hope-filled message. These tools of heart and life are for the work of resistance and liberation, humbly, lovingly, thoughtfully, carefully. Jesus' work was resistance to the oppression of Rome, his message especially to the most oppressed. God's intention for each and all of the poor and oppressed was abundance and overflowing love, justice, and peace. It's about sharing, not about conquest. About reconciliation, not dividing people into who is to be loved and to who is to be hated. Instead, it names the need for resistance. Early in his letter, Paul writes to them about how each of them is, and all of them are together, empowered in Christ. There are evil forces in our world. Now, we name them systems of oppression, systems and attitudes that foster hate, that create division, that do violence and destruction, that increase poverty and oppression. And the gospel calls believers to resist these forces, not only personally and privately, not just for ourselves in our own interest. We are called to resist too, where people, communities, even the whole planet are vulnerable. We are called to look and see in our global context the competing values of love and hate and to see this as the arena of our being human and being Christian today. What are our tools in this fight? The same as in Paul's time. Paul is imagining picking up what is at hand, but using it in a very different way than the oppressors. The armor of God isn't something that makes you impervious on the outside, but rather makes you strong on the inside, strong to be able to see the need and sustain your part in the struggle, to have the courage and the perseverance to have done all you can, to have done all we can, and keep standing, inner strength, determination, passion, conviction, energy for good. Our own hands and feet, not hands that cause destruction, but hands that heal. Not feet that march to war, but to bring news, good news of peace. Hearts and faith that treasure the good, that treasure love and justice that stand on the promise of God's inclusive love for everyone. A sense of salvation that shows out hope and security in tangible ways and voice. Voice that really gets to the truth of things. Christians are called not just to endure and resist, but also to engage in challenging the structures of injustice, the barriers that divide the wor world of the good news, which is about love and hope. Look around. What is at hand? What tools are here for us to use in bringing about the kingdom? What are our resources, and how can we use them for good and justice and love as followers of Jesus? And can we, too, reimagine the things of empire, using them as tools to bring about the subversive, loving kingdom God is calling us to bring to being, where love and justice are the goal? And we are called to serious prayer. We need, like Christians in all times who fight against oppression for inclusive love and justice, we need to have a grounded and solid spirituality as a basis for living with Christ's agenda and power in the world, rather than with an agenda served up in the media and by those who will not take poverty seriously, but see it only as a threat to themselves and their way of life. You are strong on the inside too. We are strong on the inside too. We may look vulnerable on the outside, but with the power of passion and commitment to the way of Jesus, we stand against oppression and for inclusive love and justice with the tools at hand. And love wins. 
and peace has a chance. Amen. Let us join our voices in standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of Creator God, you lead us on the path to follow Jesus, and it is not an easy path. Baptized by the Spirit, we are called to renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of our sin. Without the power of your presence in our lives, we are unable to do this, so we are grateful for the freedom and power you give us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Equipped with the power of your love, we ask your spirit to remind us who we are and whose we are in our shared moments of vulnerable silence. O oh God, we recommit ourselves to the path of Jesus, praying as he teaches us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So friends, you may now sponsor an online worship service to support our shared online ministry. Suggested sponsorship is $35, but any amount is welcome. Let us know your name and whether the sponsorship is in honor of a person or event. Send a check to Wesley Church indicating shared online worship and your sponsorship will be shown during the service for an upcoming week. We also invite you to support our churches, the one that you are most closely associated with, so we can continue both forms of ministry, online and in person. Let us bring our offerings to God with hope for possibility, with grace, and with gratitude.
let us join our voices. Living God, bless us with the guidance of the saints and the elders that we might organize for your kingdom through tenderness and compassion. In our righteous anger, breathe with us so we can root into wisdom. Use our offerings so that through our daily actions of care, we create a world where all are sustained. Amen. May the gospel of peace wake you up in the morning. May it walk with you like the shoes you slip on your feet. May the truth of our interconnectedness go with you. As if it were your wallet, your keys, in your back pocket. May the love of the Spirit cast cool shade on your life. That you might rest under the tree of your belovedness. You're living ripe with the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Amen.